Um, right now I'm going to show you a few effects that I like to use in 3D Studio Max and I use V-Ray to render um, and these effects can be kind of tricky sometimes with V-Ray so hopefully I'll explain what you need to do to make them work. Um, the first thing is the volume light. Um, as you can see I set up this little this little center with a with a basic room and just a window open um, with a camera inside. I set up my direct light here as kind of a standard as what I would use for a sun. Um, and I, I, I use that instead of a V-Ray sun because V-Ray suns don't work with volume lights in 3D Studio Max. And the reason for that is, is because volume lights need to use shadow maps. Um, that's the only way they'll work. So that's the main trick to remember. Um, you can render in either V-Ray or uh, directly in the scan line, but it has to be using a shadow map, so V-Ray lights won't work. Um, so let me show you what this looks like. We go into our camera view, and um, oh, let me show you. I set this direct light already. Let me go into it to show you what kind of settings we put on it. Oh, actually, I didn't put the volume light on it yet. So if you go into atmospheres and effects, you hit add. Go to volume light. Hit OK. And then set up. Oh, I did have one in here already. Um, the other way to do it is through the renderings tab, environment. That'll bring up the same dialog box. Um, so that's how you get it. Um, with this one that I already have in here, what we, what, what we would have to do is just pick this direct light. <coughs> These are the default settings. There's density of 5. Um, you can adjust all the attenuation settings here. The attenuation color. Um, the attenuation start percentage and end percentage. I turn a little bit of noise on here, um, and I'll show you what that does. I turn the size of that noise map way up, and the amount of it way down. The default here is 1, and the default here is, um, I think, 20. And uh, that kind of makes it look like dense little patches of smoke throughout your room. So I turn this way up so there's only a little bit of variation in the volume effect, and it's it's not quite as noisy. So let's look what that look. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, as you can see, the uh, the volume is coming through that window. It looks kind of dumb, um, and that's obviously the uh, the noise settings. And I think it's way too dense too. Um, and this is where just fidgeting a little bit and trying to get it to look right comes in because very rarely are the uh, the defaults exactly what you want and in this case the light I already had set up was not right either so we turn the density down to I'd say 1.5 and I'm just going to turn that noise off you saw what it does um, mostly you would just want to adjust the uh, the size of that noise map and then um, the amount of it I'm just going to turn it all the way off for this. That's something you need to fidget with to get right. Okay, so let's try rendering that and see how that looks. Okay, now here's a much more subtle volume light. And I actually really like this one. It, it uh, You can see it's brighter here and it, and it just kind of fades out a little bit. Um, that was really subtle and really nice looking. So that one worked good for the scene at a density of, uh, I think I said at 1.5. So um, that works there. Remember, the only trick to remember was that you got to use you have to use uh, standard lights and select V-ray or not V-ray, but just shadow maps, and then attach that volume light to it, and it'll work just fine. Now I'm going to show uh, some examples of lens effects. Another thing that I find useful in 
what I do, which is usually uh, architectural illustration. Um, this lens effect is great for... I find it mostly useful for doing night shots because when you take a picture at night the lights kind of glow and put off lens flares because the shutter is open for a longer period of time um, and this simulates that excellent. Um, so for this uh, I use standard lights usually just an omni light because I'm just looking for a little point that puts off a flare and usually that's in conjunction with another light that's actually putting off my lighting. Uh, I just use this Omni light for a flare um, because these flares and things don't work on the V-ray lights that I'm usually using. So you can see it's already got a lens effect attached to it. Um, I'm going to render this just on a solid back background and I'll show you why. Um, and really there won't there won't be any lighting coming off of this thing. Um, the, the multiplier is set to 1, it's got a color to it, um, but I'm not too concerned about these other settings I'm, because, like I said, I'm just using it as a lens effect. Um, so let's look at the settings for these. Um, I'll turn them on. <coughs> you can see there's several different kinds of lens effects. The one I use to get these night shot looking lights are these three, glow, star, and ring. Um, you can use any one of them, or all three of them together, or any combination of them. Um, in lens effects, you can see that uh, these are the global, the global settings for the lens effects. If you select, let's see, let's make sure my light is, yeah, so Omni 3 is what I'm controlling. If you select one of the lens effects, you can go into the individual settings for that one. And I've got these pretty much set up how I want them already. Um, the star. The star is one that I adjust from the defaults a little bit. I put the the quantity of rays coming out of that star at 8. Um, the intensity is at 20. I changed the angle a little bit. Um, that's just, you know, totally personal preference. I turn down the sharpness because I don't like those rays to be sharp. I want them to fade out a little bit. Um, you can adjust the taper of the, the rays coming off of it and the width of it. And this is the individual size for the star effect, but it's also being affected by this global setting up here, which I already have where I want it. Um, the glow is self-explanatory. Usually the defaults work very well for the glow. The colors work really good uh, at default. You might want to adjust the, the size and intensity again but here I'm controlling them globally as well. And then the ring is um, pretty good on defaults, but usually you need to adjust the size and intensity again. Um, and all those things need to be adjusted per scene. There's no real, uh, there's no real universal setting for those things. Um, so I've got all three of them attached to this one Omnilite. And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, there's the there's the lens effects, and I had set these up previously to how I wanted them, um, so that works pretty good right there. I like the amount of glow. The star, as you can see, has eight rays coming off it. They're kind of thin. They're not very sharp. They taper off nicely. So I <coughs> I like to make a few different kinds of these effects, and just um, save them out and use them in Photoshop. And let me show you an example of how I've done that. And this image I'm going to show you also shows an example of the volume lighting effects that we just talked about as well. So here's some of those lens flares going on. Um, kind of lens flares to simulate flashes going off in the crowd. And then lens flares coming off these spotlights up here. And then you can see the volume lighting to kind of create atmosphere. Kind of looks smoky in here a little bit. Um, so anyway, that's just a basic scene that uses these uh, these kind of techniques to enhance the image a little bit.